Hello, my name is Drackle, and today I'm going to teach you how to build this. <laughs> okay, so this is a flaming arrow cannon, as you can see. And not only is it a flaming arrow cannon, but it fires only a predetermined amount of arrows. Yes, arrows that are on fire, no less. Now I'm going to show you how to build this. Alright, so in the, the nature of my tutorials, I not only explain how to build something, I explain how it works. So that lets you modify it uh, to whatever purposes you have for it. It's not just a cookie cutter approach. Um, second note is uh, this, uh, oh, this, this circuit is a little bit different than the one I showed you on my Let's Play video, I've made it smaller, uh, much easier to hide. Uh, say you wanted to put this underground or something, uh, it'll be much easier to hide and put behind uh, walls and stuff because it's it's much more compact now. It, it was about I don't know about 30% bigger before I did this this update. Anyway, so the things you're going to need to make this, you need a dispenser, obviously, uh, redstone, redstone torches. You need a stone pressure plate, not a wood pressure plate, important. You need lava, uh, and you need arrows, obviously, and a bunch of repeaters. I think I'm going to use about, I think about seven. You can use more or less repeaters, depending on how long you want it to fire. Now, let me explain the, the concept of all this. Uh, the pressure plate, when you depress the pressure plate, in other words, you step on it, what happens is then the circ the uh, the current goes into a what's called a monostable circuit, and the monostable circuit will shut itself off after a certain period of time, which you select. In other words, it's only going to fire for X amount of seconds, and the idea behind that is that this trap can be triggered multiple times, and you don't have to restock it after each one. Um, if you just connected, say, the pressure plate to a latch and you made it permanent then it would fire until all its arrows are spent and you'd have to come and manually reset it. Or conversely, if you didn't have anything but the pressure plate and the pulsar, uh, then the arrow cannon would only fire as long as someone's standing on the plate. And that's, uh, that's not so good because I can just, you know, I could just graze the plate basically and only fire a couple of arrows. So, uh, that's the whole point behind this. I want this to fire for a predetermined amount of time, no matter what happens. And if you don't want to do that, then uh, this will be a lot easier. But we're gonna we're gonna assume that that's your purpose here. So, first thing we're gonna do is drop our dispenser down. Okay, I'm gonna put it. I keep I'm keeping this here for reference because it's a little bit difficult to build. Um, I'm gonna put it here. Now the first thing we want to do is put a redstone torch next to the dispenser. And I don't know why this is necessary. I think it's a bug in the game. But uh, what's happening is the, the pulsar that shoots the arrows is triggering the dispenser too quickly. Uh, the pulses are too short. So somehow this extra torch here makes it all work. Don't ask me how. Um, it doesn't make logical sense. But remember to put that torch there. Now, we're going to put our pressure plate down. We want it to be on line with the dispenser, obviously, or else, uh, you know, if the, the, the pressure plate was over here, the arrows would be shooting over there. That'd be kind of dumb. Okay, so we're going to have the pressure plate here. Remember, it has to be stone. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do, and this is completely optional, you can make the arrows flaming. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then skip this part. First thing you do is dig down one. And now we're going to build an encasement for the lava. Uh, I think I want to build it three tall. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to build up like that, and I'm going to put four blocks around a center block, and then we can remove this. Okay. And now we have our bucket of lava, and we're going to put it right here. And the purpose of this encasement is to make sure it doesn't spill out, and it flows directly down into the pit, like so. Perfect. No problem. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make our uh, shooting mechanism. In this case, it is a rapid pulsar. Uh, a rapid pulsar is basically a series of redundant uh, fast clocks. And a clock is something that toggles redstone current on and off very quickly. And the purpose of that is to shoot the dispenser very quickly. Right? Makes sense. 
Okay? So a rapid pulsar is very simple to make. Two blocks like that. We're going to need torches on four sides of the blocks. So like this. We have torches on either side. Now we have redstone on top of the blocks, between the blocks, and this is the most important part, between the torches. And you notice this is going to pulse on and off very quickly. And that, that uh, fizzing sound you hear is actually redstone torch burnout. And that's why we had to make a redundant clock, basically. Now I'm going to turn the sound off because that's going to get really annoying after a while. Okay, so we have that done. Now what we want to do is create the actual monostable circuit that's going to work this whole thing. Now we're going to run a line of redstone from our pressure plate into where we want the circuit. And I think I'm going to put it, yeah, I think I'm going to put it here. I'll make sure you have enough space to do all this. I'm going to widen that out a little bit so I have more space. And now we're going to build the monostable circuit. And this particular circuit is not my design. Um, my design for this was significantly uh, larger, but it worked. Uh, and this design I'm going to show you is made by a guy called Minecraft Addict. He's an excellent uh, redstone engineer, if you want to call him that. And it basically works similarly to my old one. What's going to happen is we're going to have a latch and a... Uh, a series of repeaters for delay and the uh, repeater delay will reset the latch when we're done firing and don't worry I'll explain it step by step but the uh, the only note that I have with with his circuit the uh, this one from Minecraft addict I'm not quite sure how it's gonna perform on multiplayer I've seen it do some pretty weird things even on single player um, it, it doesn't quite make logical sense though it works like 99% of the time um, if you don't want to do it like this or you're having trouble with uh, with it in multiplayer, you might want to check out my Let's Play video, episode 11, uh, and then you could build it the way I built it originally. Then you should have no more problems because this one relies on very precise timing, unfortunately. Okay, so now we're going to build the circuit, right? We're going to have a block here. And this is connected to the plate directly into the block. We're going to have a torch here. And excuse me while I look for reference. Okay. Okay, okay. And we're going to skip the day, actually. <laughs> okay, we're back. We're back. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is, con is construct the actual latch. And a latch is a one bit memory cell. I'll probably do a tutorial on how to build a latch and all the different compact versions you can use. But essentially, what it is, it's a uh, yes or no, one or zero. Uh, depending on what state it's in, you can call it high or low. Um, essentially, when the current goes into the latch, it sets one state, and that state allows the pulsar to fire. And then what happens is we reset the latch by setting it to the other state, which prevents the pulsar from firing. Now, I'll, I'll try to make that more clear as we go on. All right, so we have a, a block of redstone right there. Let me put a, a block of material there with a torch on the right side. So this torch powers this wire going into this block which goes into that torch and now we have a splodge of redstone right here and be very very careful not to connect this to your stone pressure plate inputs if you do it's not gonna work or it'll, it'll work but it won't work properly I'll give you that now we're gonna have two repeaters one here and one here and please note that these repeaters are facing in that direction. They are not facing in this direction. Also very important. Now this is basically the latch. We've connected this block into this block which runs around back into this block. And that's a latch. It's basically a loop. Uh, and that's how that works. And if you remember that then you'll remember how to set the repeaters correctly. Okay, so we have our latch done. Now we're gonna put the output of the latch here, here. Okay? One block here, one block here. It looks like this block doesn't do anything, but it actually does, believe it or not. Um, and this is actually connected to the torch. And now the output is going to run, yep, the output is going to run over here. And let's just leave that there for a second and then complete this. Now, we're going to set up the actual, and I, I really need more space. <laughs> I should have cleared this beforehand. Um, we're going to set up the actual monostable part of the circuit, and it's just going to be a line of repeaters. And 
as many as you want or as little as you want, depending on how many arrows you want it to fire. Now set and, and these repeaters you can keep set to one, whatever, set them to whatever you want. Um, you can even how we can set them to four to give us more delay if we want to. Um, that actually would save repeaters. Now you want to set these to four as well. And remember repeaters are directional, so I couldn't put a repeater here and then turn. I have to have a piece of wire here. And then I'll have two more repeaters here. And a piece of wire. And we'll have two more repeaters going into here. A little bit of lag there. And a little bit of lag there. What's going on? What's going on? Anyway. So that is the monostable part of the circuit. All right. Now this thing should be uh, this thing should be all set. Uh, at least the uh, the monostable part. Let's let's give it a test by standing on the plate. That's actually a lot of delay for a little space, isn't it? But that works perfectly. Now what's happening when I step on this plate? The current's traveling into into this latch, which is setting the latch, right? It's setting it to, uh, call it the low state, it's setting it to having this torch be on and that torch be off, okay? So that latch is set permanently, but since we also have this connected into this block, which is running into these repeaters, it's going, to, it's, uh, it's going this way to set the latch, and it's also going this way into the repeaters. And the repeaters delay it by 4, 8, 12, 16, 20... 24 ticks before it reaches here and recess the latch to its original position and resetting the latch is what stops it from firing but this is a little bit of a peculiar design that Minecraft Attic made he actually made it cycle twice and I'm not quite sure how that works honestly um, it, it seems to be buggy honestly but however it works um, it actually cycles twice through this so we're going to get closer to 48 ticks instead of 24 and that's what makes lets me make it much more compact than my previous version okay I, I wish I could do a better job explaining it but I think it's actually um, a bit of a bug personally but anyway now we have the monostable section set up set up we're going to connect it into the actual pulsar now um, how this works is we're going to introduce a current into the pulsar, right? And when we introduce a current into the pulsar, this is going to stop blinking. It's just going to go uh, solid red because what's actually happening is you're powering all of this co with a constant power, so it will stop blinking. That's basically what's happening. But as you notice, when this is uh, when nothing's standing on the plate, this is off. So if I just connected this right here, uh, say to this output, and I, please note that when you do the output, you do not want to run it past this torch, okay? You want to connect it like this. If you run it into the torch, it's not going to work. All right, notice when I just connect this, it's, uh, it's, it's flashing. So that's not what we want. It's not stopping the pulsar. So all you have to do is create an inverter right here. Very simple. Run that straight into here, and you put a torch on this end. And then you connect like so. And now that we have the inverter in, the pulsar has stopped pulsing. And that's what we want. That's exactly what we want from this. Um, and the, the way this inverter works, it takes a dead signal, a signal that is low, in other words, unpowered, and it creates a high signal, in other words, a powered signal, which stops the pulsar from blinking. Right. So that's how that works. And what happens is when I step on this plate, it's going to create, uh, it's going to go through the whole monostable thing, and it will create a high pulse here. In other words, this will be powered on. It will turn the inverter off, which will let the pulsar blink. Okay. Now, the final step is connect the uh, pulsar to the dispenser. And that's that's it. That, that's very simple. No problem. All right. So we have this set up the way we want it. Now we're going to load it with arrows. And I'm predicting this is going to fire... Probably about 32 arrows. I'm not quite sure how many repeaters I put down. It doesn't really matter, honestly. You can tweak it to your heart's content. You can sit here and, and change all the delays until you get exactly the amount of arrows you want it to fire. No problem. And it will fire the same amount of arrows every time, which is really cool. All right, so this is all set. We're going to test it out. I'm going to give it a target. 
Okay, I'm going to put it in front of the pressure plate, just for now. And call that a, a mob size target. Yep, that's how we want it. Alright, it fired a total of... Uh, <laughs> my math is, is fail. It fired 28 arrows. Exactly 28 arrows. Okay. So you can play with the delay. Uh, make it whatever you want. But that's uh, that's how the cannon works. And uh, I, I gotta thank Minecraft Addict for uh, making this uh, much more compact. This is really not that big. You can even make it smaller if you... Uh, if you more efficiently uh, use space, I suppose you could even stack it vertically. You say you could put the uh, the pressure plate and the, the latch mono stable combination on one floor, and then have the pulsar and uh, and the inverter on a, on the bottom floor if you wanted to. That'd be fine, and you don't need all this space here. I could I could have made this you know I could have made the inverter right here, going straight into the pulsar here, and then into the dispenser. But I wanted to I wanted to make this very clear how this was working. You can mess around with making it more compact as you like. All right, so that is the flaming arrow cannon. Um, let's see a couple of notes. Uh, if you don't want the flames, you just remove the lava, no problem. Secondly, you could also hide this behind a piston door if you wanted to, and the way you would do that. Um, uh, the way I would do that, at least, I would split off this output line from the circuit, and I would send one to uh, uh, pistons here. That would open the door in front of the dispenser, and then I would put a one tick delay. Um, oh, sorry, I would split off after the uh, the inverter. So I'd have two pistons here being powered by this output line here, and you you can make it uh, work better by rearranging the circuitry. And then I would add a one ticker probably a little bit more than one tick delay to the actual pulsar by using a repeater so that makes sure the door would open before it started firing. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. I might do one of those one of these days. I mean you could you could just hide it behind the lava. It looks like a lava waterfall and all of a sudden start, arrows start shooting out. That'd be pretty sick. A um, couple other notes. If you just wanted to uh, fire until it's done then you, you don't need this whole mono stable thing. All you would do is create a latch and this is a very compact latch design, which uh, Krasina came up with, one of my friends. It's really quite simple. And we're going to have uh, the second torch here. We're going to have redstone here. And we're going to have redstone here. And that's, that's basically a latch design. That's about as small as you can make it, I think. And then you could just have that uh, instead of instead of this latch here. And all you would do is run the pressure plate into one of these uh, inputs, whichever one you want. Doesn't really matter. You could run it into uh, this input, or you could run it into uh, into uh, this redstone current right here. And whenever you whenever someone stepped on the plate, it would fire all its arrows and continue firing until you reset it manually if that's what you wanted to or you could completely forget the whole latch and mono stable stuff and you can just make it so the uh, whenever someone's standing on the plate it fires that, I don't think that's a good option because they're gonna move unless they're in they're stuck in a one wide pit or something but anyway I don't wanna I don't wanna bore you to death but there's there's tons of different ways you could wire this and, and make it really cool you can even use a T flip-flop like I have over here um, to toggle it on and off if you so chose. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my monostable uh, circuit and latch flaming arrow cannon design. That's a mouthful. I hope you liked it. I hope I did a good job of explaining because I wanted you to understand how it worked, not only how to build it, because anyone could, you know, uh, monkeys on typewriters create Shakespeare, that kind of thing. Anyone could copy this and do it, but if you really wanted to change it and make it better or make a different use for it then you need to understand it so this has been Drackle uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you did please subscribe thumbs up all that good stuff uh, check out my let's play series and I'll see you next time